like chubby crumbs. Clean out their water, put fresh water in. All right, today we're gonna start our apple harvest wine. So as you can see here, I have six gallons of, um, five gallons, I think, five gallons of Mott's apple juice and our fermentation container here. So we're gonna start with heating this up because you wanna get it to the point where the yeast will start to work. Um, we'll put that in there, we'll get it up to temperature, and then we'll show you the steps along the way. All right, so we're gonna get into our next step. Right now I have about two gallons of apple juice that we've warmed up to about 75 degrees. Next I have something called bentonite that we are going to, we mix with some warm water and we're gonna put in there. Now it's gonna make the apple juice look a little yucky and kind of murky. The point of it is that it's gonna pull out those impurities and help clarify the wine. Um, some of you may have heard of bentonite before. It's used in um, beauty products and toothpaste and things like that. So um, it's really good at pulling those impurities out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that and mix it in. Right, the bentonite is in there. You can see now it kind of looks more like an apple cider versus an apple juice. But I assure you, by the time this is all said and done, this is gonna be the, uh, the final product that we're gonna come up with. So we'll be right back. We're gonna put some more apple juice in there and we'll mix it up and we'll come back to you. Okay, so we've been adding the rest of the apple juice along with sugar. Now you might think you don't need to sweeten it because apple juice is pretty sweet. But the yeast actually needs the sugar because what happens is that'll activate the yeast. It'll create the alcohol and also let off the carbon dioxide. So that's why we have the airlocks on the top of our bottles and that'll, you'll see the bubbles that'll come through there. So this is just the last little bit of it that I'm going to add in just for demonstration purposes because it's kind of hard to do the whole big thing. Now that all the sugar is in there, the next step is to take a reading with our hydrometer. And what that's gonna do is tell us the density of the liquid so that we can translate to the alcohol percentage. Um, so we have a certain range that we want to get to, so we may have to add some extra sugar in here. So we're gonna take that reading and we'll show you how we do that. Okay, here's our hydrometer. When you look closely at this, they have different sections for how you want your wine to come out. So there's a dessert wine, a table wine, and then the finished wine. So depending on where it falls is, if you, I'm gonna turn it a little bit here, you can see the alcohol percentage. So depending on what we get, it'll give us a different percentage. So that's how you measure it. So depending on how dense the liquid is, we'll determine what level it floats at. So we're gonna just go ahead and take a reading for that to see where we're at. We know where we kind of wanna be, that table wine area. So we'll see what it comes out as. All right, we finished with our hydrometer readings. We got it to a level of about 80, which you can see here, and that's in the table wine section, which is right where we want it. So turning it around, you're looking between a 10 to 13% alcohol percentage potential. So that's kind of right where we want it to be. So we are good with that. Next, we're gonna just add our additives and it'll be ready to go. All right, we have everything ready in our bubbler. So now we're gonna add the wine additives. And if you look online, there's a lot of different apple wine recipes. They all kind of call for the same different additives in order to make the wine. So we have wine tannin, yeast nutrient, Camden tablets, and pectic enzyme. So I have those measured out. We're just gonna put those in there, give it a good stir, and then we have to wait until the wine itself warms up a little bit because we need to have the wine at a certain temperature for the yeast. Okay, everything's ready to go. Our wine is at the ideal temperature, so we are ready to put our yeast in. So I have a wine yeast here. You can see our little contraption that we have here. There's the airlock on top, which is gonna help seal that together. We also have this contraption here, and it kind of wires around and comes down to this plug, so it'll let us know what the temperature is within the wine. There is a sticker on the outside, but we've found that this is much more accurate, because so you can see it's kind of, this is much more specific than that. So all we have to do now is add our yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that on. 
top of the wine. Okay, that's it. So we're going to put the lid on, the airlock's already in place, and then we wait. Okay, so it's been about three weeks since we showed you the apple wine, and it is finished fermenting. So we're taking it from the bubbler down to the secondary carboy. So you can see it's filling up down there. Um, and at this point, we added some things to stabilize it and clear it. So that's our Campton tablets and our potassium sorbate, I think. Uh, so now we are trying to degas de it. So this helps kind of get any kind of um, air and everything that's trapped in there. Carbon dioxide and yeah. whatnot. Right? All, that, all that good stuff. So the easy way, I mean, you could do this by hand, but it's easier using the drill. It's got this little whip. So the key is to do this before it gets too close to the top, because lesson learned, I did this once, and when you're degassing it and the carbon dioxide's coming out, it does tend to overflow and go everywhere. So you do it as it's pouring. And if you could do a quick close up, you could see all the dead yeast and all the dead everything from within, you know, the fermentation process at the bottom. So we don't want to disturb that. We want to just take the wine off and put it in here. And we'll let this sit for a while and then we'll rack it from this carboy to another carboy because there's still, it needs to clear. And then you'll see there'll be some more sediment. We'll do that like two or three times. Okay, we're finishing it up here. You can see, if you listen, you can hear all of the bubbles and the carbon dioxide. So we're just gonna finish that up and then we have to add a little bit of water so that we can bring it up to the top of the bottle. And then we're gonna put the airlock on, sit it up here with our other one that's, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up here with this one. Yes, that. This is our red that we have a video on. Patiently waiting right. to drink. All right, so. I think all the carbon dioxide's pretty much, well, I mean, there's some in there, but the airlock will let the remaining little bit that's in there escape. And you can't get it too good. And by doing this, we don't want to introduce too much air into the wine because then that'll kind of give it a bad taste. So what we're going to do is we're done with this. We're just going to let this sit until it gets pretty darn clear. You'll, it'll be nice and clear, and we'll show you that, and then there'll be the sediment and then we'll rack it one more time and then we'll put our finishing stuff in to change it from just apple wine to our harvest wine, which... But that's a proprietary blend. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just kind of show you what's in it. Yeah. Or... Very boring minutes later. Okay, we just racked the wine. You can see here it has cleared out nicely, like we said that it would. Got all of the sediment out of it. So right now it's sitting at about 12.5% alcohol, um, and it's just a straight apple wine. And what we want to do is add some spices to it to make it more of an apple pie wine. So there's lots of different combinations that you can pick, but these are what we like. We have cinnamon, whole allspice, whole cloves, and whole nutmegs. So we're going to go ahead and add those in. 
and then we'll let it sit for a little bit so that those flavors can come into the wine. Wow! Okay, so we're gonna finish up adding the rest of our spices to make it the apple pie wine. And once we have them all added in here, then we're gonna let that sit for another month. And then we'll rack it again so that we can get all of the things that we added out of there before we bottle it. Yikes. Those are the nutmegs. Wow! Some cloves. Wow! And the allspice. Wow! That's it. Amazing! Okay, we're just going to top this off with a little bit of water. Because if you remember, I, we talked about before, we don't want to have all this air in there. So we're just going to put a little bit of spring water in there to fill it out. And that little bit of water that she's adding is not going to change the flavor at all. At times when we've made wine in the past, we've actually put several bottles in. The wine is so strong. I mean, we're going to bring it down like 0.2 of yeah. alcohol level. So, and then we're going to put the cap on. And then we're just going to wait about another month. We'll rack it again. We'll leave everything we just added behind. And then once we do that second or the third rack after this, uh, then we'll go ahead and bottle it and we'll show you the bottling process. Stop it. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> Done? Yes, are you? Yes. All right, action. <laughs> this is why I make my own wine. Okay.